All right, this is fifth grade, module four, lesson 21. And in this lesson, we're going to be relating fractions with their decimal equivalents. For example, we've, we all know that one half is equal to 0 0.5, right? Five tenths. Um, the, the problem with the traditional way of teaching this is oftentimes uh, reduced to some sort of rote algorithm where you're supposed to divide and turn the fraction into a decimal and that's how you how you do that. Instead, this lesson, instead of just teaching a rote algorithm, is really trying to teach number sense, meaning we're going to take that fraction and we're going to multiply that fraction by 1. But in this case, because anything times 1 is itself, but in this case, we want a denominator to be some sort of power of 10. So a power of 10 might be 10 or 100 or 1,000. And so um, we can think of that 1 as 5 over 5. There's my fraction. 5 over 5, that's 1. And so now that I've got a a fraction that equals 1, I know that even though the numbers may end up looking different, for example, 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10, so even though 1 half looks different from 5 tenths, we know they're equivalent to one another because I multiplied by 1. And I just so happens I multiplied by 5 over 5, which is 1. And ignore my dog because she is barking. And then, but once I've got 5 tenths, I now know that that can be written as a decimal, 5 tenths, using the place value chart. So let's put that concept into practice here. So you can see that we're going to start with 1 third and we're going to multiply by 1 which means it's not going to change its value. One third is going to stay one third because we're multiplying by one. But you can see instead the one is going to be three over three, or three thirds. So now one third times one, or three thirds. One third times three thirds gives us three ninths because you just multiply straight across. One times three is three, three times three is nine. So now we know that one-third is equivalent to three-ninths. Three Similarly, two-thirds times one. Now we need to write a fraction that's equivalent to one, so the numerator and the denominator have to be the same. But this time they're asking us to specifically change two-thirds into fourteen twenty-firsts, which means we're going to have to multiply by 7 over 7, and sure enough, that is one whole right there. And then the last one, 5 halves times 1, so of course the value is not going to change. We don't know what the fraction is, but we do see that the numerator is going to be 25. So somehow we have to change this 5 into a 25. Pretty straightforward, means multiply by 5 which means, by rule, the denominator has to be 5 because we have to multiply by the number 1. So 5 halves times 5 fifths is equal to 25 over 10, or 25 tenths. So let's continue practicing this. Now the first one has kind of been done for us. You can see that we've got, oh, I'm going to zoom in here right here, boom. So we've got three-fourths being multiplied by one. So remember, that is one whole. It's 25 over 25. And so three times 25, and let's do this a little bit bigger, is 75. And sure enough, four times 25 is 100. But now that we've got 75 hundredths, how do we write that as a decimal? That's 0 0.75. Now, if you're not entirely sure you remember that that is 0 0.75, the idea would be 
go down here to a place value chart. So these can be the ones. Here's our decimal. And there's my dog. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. And so when we have 75 hundredths, that means we're trying to say we have 75 dots right here. But you can't have 75 dots in a single column because every set of 10 dots equals one dot in the column to the left. So basically that means 75 hundredths is equivalent to 7 tenths and 5 hundredths left over. So looking at that next problem, well, let's see if we can first... Can I shrink all this down? I don't know if I can. Nah, it won't let me. Rats. Nope. Okay, so moving on to that next problem up here in the upper right-hand corner right here. So we have one-fourth times, and don't forget, that's one. One-fourth times one, which means we're not going to change the value. We're just going to change the way it looks. So one times 25 is our numerator. 4 times 25 is our denominator, which gives us 25 one hundredths, which gives us the decimal 0 0.25. So on these problems, they're giving us less scaffolding, and uh, so we have to do a little bit more of the heavy lifting on our own. We're trying to turn, in this case, two-fifths, into a fraction where the denominator is either 10 or 100 or 1,000, etc. Uh, those are called powers of 10. And so I can see that 5 can easily be turned into a 10. And there's my dog again by multiplying by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. So remember, this number has to be a 1 which means the numerator has to be a 2. So that means 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. And that gives us the decimal 0 0.4. Let's continue on here. So we're going to take this 3 twentieths, and we know that we're going to multiply it by 1. And I want it to make it so that the denominator is some sort of power of 10. Remember, either 10 or 100 or 1,000. And I can see that 20 uh, can easily be turned into a 100 by multiplying by 5. So that means my fraction is going to be 5 over 5. My one whole is going to be 5 fifths. So 20 times 5 is 100, so 3 times 5 is 15, and that gives me the decimal 0 0.15. All right, let's put this skill to practice with a word problem. So it says a lease has 3 quarters of a dollar, and that's going to be the important thing right there. And she buys a stamp that costs 44 cents. First, we're supposed to change both numbers into decimals, and then tell how much money Elise has after paying for the stamp. All right, so let's first off take that three quarters, and we're going to turn it into a decimal, because that's what the directions say right here. Well, let's see. We know that we want to turn the denominator into a 10 or a hundred, or a thousand, or any other power of ten. And we can see that we're going to multiply by one. And we can see that it's pretty easy to turn four into a hundred, because all we have to do is multiply by twenty-five. So our fraction equivalent of one is twenty-five twenty-fifths. And that means the denominator 4 times 25 is 100, and the numerator, 3 times 25, is 75, and so the decimal 
is 0 0.75. So there's our decimal equivalent. And you know what? Honestly, that kind of makes sense. Three quarters, if you're thinking about money, three quarters is 75 cents. So that's a nice mnemonic to remember why that answer right here totally makes sense. And we know that 44 cents is equal to 0 0.44. And now we're supposed to figure out how much money she has after paying for the stamp. Well, that's going to be 75 or hundredths minus 44 hundredths gives us 31 hundredths. Another way we could have done that is left everything as fractions. 75 hundredths minus 44 hundredths equals 31 hundredths, which of course equals 0 0.31. And technically we often put a zero there. 0 0.31, and that is our answer. So really, if, if we want to talk about money, how much money does she have? Uh, we would say 31, oh, I don't know where to put this. <laughs> Let's do it down here. She would have 31 cents left over. Or you could say 0 0.31 dollars. That's another way that you could say the answer. And that wraps up this lesson, this grade 5, module 4, lesson 21, where we are writing fractions as their decimal equivalents. Things like 3 quarters is equal to 0 0.75.